Hello everybody, it's Sylvie, welcome back, I hope you're doing good. Today we're doing a tag and it's another very late response to this tag uh, because my channel wasn't around when it was first, when it was first popular, when it was first a thing. So this is going to be the tarot to the extreme tag. I'm doing both like versions in one. It's a tarot to the extreme double bill. Um, I saw Tara at Tara is Cozy do this um, a couple weeks ago um, and it reminded me that it existed and it's a really fun tag. It's another one that I like wanted to do but just didn't have a channel way back when. So anyhow, this is originally by Malena Teresa. I will link both her videos below because like I said, this is two versions, two versions, two parts that I'm squishing into one. Um, and yeah, let's look at some decks. So the first the first prompt is minimalist versus maximalist. Okay, sorry, I'm messing around with them. Um, with cameras. Uh, so this is the Lifelines Tarot. Um, and this is surely, like, look at this. This has got to be the most minimal deck that ever minimaled. Um, mini, mini size. Minimal artwork, minimal colour palette, if you can even call this a colour palette, it's black line work on a white background and the line work is, it's like a, a redraw of Pamela Coleman Smith's line work but as you can see it's not even the full line work, it's like this single line drawing of the like, I guess imp important parts, you could see it as important parts um, of each card. So it's super duper minimal. This I feel like was such an easy pick. <laughs> also like the only pick I really could have chosen because I don't think I tend to go in for minimal decks really. And then we have here, this is my maximal deck, maximalist deck. This is the Tarot de El Dios de los Tres. This is a Fournier deck. So just like the um, Lifelines was such an easy pick for a minimal deck. I feel like this was such an easy pick for a maximalist deck because look at it. This is such an explosion of colour, like an explosion of imagery. There is there is so much going on in each of these cards. Um, I also think it's really interesting how my minimal deck was, like technically speaking, it's kind of a fully illustrated deck. And then this one is is like technically speaking a pip deck, but it's my maximalist deck because... I certainly would usually assume it would be the other way around, wouldn't you? You'd assume a pep deck would be more minimal, but definitely not in this case. God, I love this deck. I need to pull out more often. It's just so much fun. Okay. Gay skeletons. Okay, we're going to leave this here and pretend it's decorative and not just that I simply cannot be bothered to put the cards away. The next prompt is a daytime deck and a nighttime deck. This is my Grimalkin's Curious Cats Tarot and this is my pick for a daytime deck. Oh, the two of cups on top, that's cute. Okay, so this is my daytime pick. I think pretty much just because it feels very springy to me, um, like all the flowers and it's all very pretty and like all the blossom. Um, and yeah, spring is when the days start getting longer. So I guess that's where I get the daytime association from with this deck. Um, yeah, like this is a very, what can I say? It's a daytime deck because I say so. The vibes are right. I feel like I want to, I want to do the thing and like pair them like the cool kids are doing. <laughs> I say like the cool kids are doing as if this tag isn't. God, I want to say like over a year old. Was it like last summer? Anyhow, my nighttime deck is the Midnight Magic Tarot. Um, the clue is in the name, right? I I like this deck a lot and it definitely feels like nighttime to me. It's got the cozy black background. Everything is like hazy and gorgeous, like lit by moonlight kind of vibes. Um, and it's literally called Midnight, so. And honestly, these kind of look cute together. Like, despite the black background, there's actually quite a lot of colour in the Midnight Magic deck, so. Yeah. They kind of go. 
Oh, I'm dropping a card. Who did I drop? The Fool. That feels appropriate. My best shuffle and my worst shuffle. So my best shuffle. This is the Tarot of the Crystal World. I feel like I talk about this all the bloody time. Um, but this is just, this is such a lovely shuffle. I will show you some cards. Um, I don't know about like my best shuffle because I've not like done a battle royale of my decks although now I mention it that's totally the kind of thing I would do and I would make a spreadsheet about it but anyway it's got this gorgeous like can you see the texture like linen-y kind of texture and it's all like swishy and smooth but it's not like slippery and it just sounds so good it never clumps up the gilding is fine it doesn't like feel really sharp and it riffles and bridges like a goddamn dream. What's the betting I fuck it up now on camera? Oh, it's just so good. Like, it's a dream to shuffle, it really is. And then my worst shuffle. <laughs> okay, look, like, it's not showing up because it's so reflective. It's this pink thing is my worst shuffle. I think we're upside down. I think we're upside down twice no okay so this is if i can get it to show up uh this is the neo rider tarot collection <laughs> i'm sorry i can't get over that um right this this thing um this is like you can you can't see because of the way the reflection's working but i can see you can like see through the cards because it's one of those plastic decks and like do you, do you have any idea how slippery this is? Like, it's one of those plastic decks and it's just a complete nightmare. I backed this. It's just a void. Um, I don't know how it's showing up, but at least on my viewfinder, it just looks like a black hole because of the way the reflection is working. Um, yeah, this is one of those plastic decks. There's no point laying it out because you can't see anything. But it's just so damn slippery. Like, I literally can't shuffle with it. And honestly, it's kind of tragic. Because this obnoxious hot pink is, is genuinely, like, maybe my favourite colour. And it's shiny and metallic. Like, aggressive pink is truly my favourite colour. I'm going to try and riffle it and I'm going to regret it. I don't know if you heard that crash in the background. That was me dropping it as I tried to riffle it. Or even though I've tried to riffle it, tried to pick it up to riffle it. Anyhow, it's a terrible shuffle. I literally can't use it. And I think I've just turned a bunch of cards upside down as well. Or maybe just that one. <laughs> It's a very dramatic deck. I didn't do like a side by side, but um, since you couldn't see the pink cards, I don't think we're missing out on too much. Okay, prompt number four, confronting versus comforting. Right, where is everybody? Confronting versus comforting. So confronting the vampire tarot by Natalie Hertz. I'm afraid this one is out of print, but I got my copy on eBay. And um, I, I think there's like, it's still relatively easy to get because I routinely search for her other deck that I don't have. Um, and I see this one semi, semi frequently. Anyway, this deck. I have not used this a whole ton or for like bigger spreads, but I have used this. Um, I used it recently for a week or so of daily draws in combination with the Urban Crow Oracle, to be fair, which is also pretty intense. Um, but like, it was not a gentle week. This was not a gentle deck. Um, it was it was indeed confronting. Um, it might work better with maybe, like, oh, I love this hanged man though. That's so good. I love vampires. Um, it might work better with other Oracle decks that are maybe a bit, but like temper it a little bit. I'm not sure, but my experience of this deck thus far is that it is it is indeed confronting. Like, look at this. I love it though. And comforting, we have the Squid Cake Marseille Tarot. This is the mass market 
Um, this is just so cute. Look, the pink edges, the candy corn on the backs, the little strawberries. I love it. Um, yeah, this is a Marseille deck. And the reason why this is my comforting deck is because I, I don't know, I think I used this for a time. Um, like when I first started working with it and first trying to like, started to, first started trying to learn the Marseille was a time when I was really in need of some comfort. So it's really solidified the little axolotl um it's really solidified its place in my collection as like a comforting deck um and like the colors are really cute like it's not scary to look at but also like the size and the pink edges I love I love pink it's my favorite color like it's just it's comfortable to hold and so it is it is thus a comforting deck you know because I'm just I'm curious like they're not gonna look good <laughs> that I just like <laughs> aesthetically confronting versus comforting 100% right like completely opposite ends of the spectrum every day versus every so often all right every so often is the Buffy deck and every day who have we got right every day is a Rider Waite Smith clone, specifically um, a Tarot Collectibles Rider Waite Smith clone. This feels like such an obvious answer to say a Rider Waite Smith for um, an everyday reader, but you know, it's true. I have several Tarot Collectibles decks. This one is the Spring Weight. Um, this is my most recent one. It hasn't seen a whole lot of use yet because it, the, the well, Indiegogo campaign came through at the end of summer isn't she gorgeous um so i haven't used it that much yet i definitely will do in the springtime can we just take a moment for the emperor with his little bunny fucking adorable um yeah i really love tarot collectibles decks i think they're really fun the rider smith is always an easy read like it's such a good like grab and go kind of a deck i know the system i can read for pretty much anything with a rider smith yeah every day for sure. Also this one is sparkly as you can clearly see and um, if you didn't get it from my bright pink metallic deck or my super cute squid cake, um, my taste is tacky <laughs> and that is putting it mildly and like I'm 100% okay with that. My every so often deck is the Buffy the Vampire Slayer tarot deck. This is by Insight Editions. Oh. And um, I'm actually using the Buffy at the moment. It's my daily reading this week. I'm doing a three card draw with it every day this week. But um, considering this is the first time I've actually like really read with it since it came out in the spring. Um, like I've pulled it out and played with it, but I haven't really like read with it properly. I think it definitely fits the bill of every so often because this is the first real use it's getting after sitting in my collection for like... I don't know, over half a year, one even is time. But it's a really fun deck. But not one that I've pulled out frequently. And I'm not even sure why. But having read it this week, so far she is not kind, she is not friendly. She keeps giving me advice such as the Tower and the Three of Swords, which like, rude. Anyway, I wonder how these look together. I mean, the saturation of the colors is like, not too dissimilar. Honestly, that's not terrible. I wouldn't choose to put them together, but it's not the worst random pairing in my collection. I quite like the Hermit and the Fool, the way they look together, actually. Yeah, not bad. Who else is Team Xander Slander, though? I don't know if it's just because I didn't watch Buffy when it was airing, because I was a baby. Um, I don't know, not a baby, but I was too young to be watching Buffy. I was wee. Um, but watching this, you know, not of its time, Xander fucking sucks. Okay, overrated versus underrated. 
I kind of super struggled with this so I ended up going with my overrated deck is the wild unknown and my underrated was the tarot of the crystal world and I will tell you for why. This is the only deck I own that I would consider to be overrated. Uh, this is the pocket tin edition of the wild unknown. Um, like I've been pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoy working with this deck but like I, I don't think it's like all that the way that some people do. Um, I get that it's been really significant in terms of like tarot publishing but you know it's fairly simple art in terms of the symbolism. I mean I'm not dissing the art style or the skill or anything like that but in terms of like look at this look at this two of swords. In terms of the symbolism on the card it's pretty bare. So yeah, the guidebook, at least the one that comes with this mini deck, is also really bare bones, like there's not much to it. I don't know what changes, if any, have been made from the like full-size mass market and or the indie edition of the deck. I don't know if that was a better guidebook that maybe warrants the hype a little bit more, but um, you know, this is fine. I don't think it's amazing. If I was going to pick a deck for everybody and their mother to own, like, if I was in charge, it probably would not be this deck. As for an underrated deck, I went with the Tarot of the Crystal World. So, I was trying not to double up on decks. I know this was my best shuffle, but, like, it happened. What can you do? Um, so I'll show you this again. <laughs> like, I think this deck is brilliant. I really, really do. Have I shown you all these cards already? Let's change things up um yeah I think this is a really brilliant deck in terms of it being underrated like to be fair this was a kickstarter I think it only shipped like six months ago so it's not had nearly as much time as the wild unknown to like gain popularity and notoriety and all that but like even so like I don't really think I've seen many people talk about this deck or I am missing out which is always a possibility but um like this is just so good I love the like style, like I love the art style, like the visual aesthetics of this deck I really enjoy, but also just the kind of like flavour and like perspective this deck has got, how it presents the images, I really enjoy. So yeah. Yeah, should we see how they look together? Yeah. Not super a vibe. Nah, not really. Okay, light work versus shadow work. So <laughs> this is, um, I kind of struggled with this pairing because light work and shadow work are not really, like they're not things that I do consciously in, in readings. Like, I do readings about, like, shadowy stuff, but I don't think about it in terms of shadow work, for instance. But anyhow, this is my, I guess, light work deck, which again, like, I, light work is not terminology that I even really consider, so I had to kind of think about this. But um, in terms of spirituality, healing, looking for guidance... Maybe I'm misinterpreting light work, who the hell knows, but this is what we're going with. Um, so the deck that I have grabbed for this is the Tarot of Aphrodite. Uh, this was a Kickstarter. This edition is sold out, but there is a second edition. It's funding as I'm filming this. I don't know when it finishes, but there is a chance to get your hands on a slightly different copy of this deck. Anyhow, I spoke about this recently in my Libra season wrap up. Um, I mentioned that this is a deck that doesn't make readings feel like super stressful or urgent. It like lets me have a bit more of a pulled back perspective, um, which feels right for light work, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to move on. Okay, battery died, but we're back. Um, I was talking about a shadow work deck. Basically, if I want to go deep, the Mary L is the deck to do that with you know like if I'm gonna spend such a long time diving into like a deck and diving deep with images and 
spending so long like looking at the guidebook I might as well be doing it for a reading that is also like diving deep like a shadow work kind of reading you know and like I feel like just sitting with the shadowy stuff while you're trying to like work through the cards is like half the battle like I don't know sitting with your shadow instead of trying to move past it sort of a thing so yeah that's the Mary L for my shadow work deck I think it's safe to say it's it's a world away from the Aphrodite <laughs> like almost could not be more different you know I always think this queen of discs should be the empress card like I always look at that and my first is instinct is to see an empress card um I don't know it's like the green and I suppose the the queen of pentacles like is earth so that feels right anyway anyway I think that was everything in like the first half of the tag so we're on to the second second half of the tag, second edition of the tag, and the prompt is modern versus vintage. This is, wow, she's so smugly. This is the Eldritch Overload. God, I need to pull this out more often. It's, it's, it's falling. She's everywhere. It's such a cool deck. Um, I guess this is technically more like futuristic than strictly modern. God, it's so extra. I love it. Um, yeah, more futuristic than modern maybe, but like, it counts. Um, if you know me, you know that I don't love a modern deck in the sense of like realistic and super relatable. Like I don't love a deck where the cards look like something I could go out and see in my everyday life. Like weirdly, I find that harder to relate to. Um, but this like super futuristic, this is like a cyberpunk dystopia world. Like there's a whole the guidebook for this is so cool there's a whole like D, D compatible module with it like it's great um and it's sparkly and i'm i'm tacky we've established this and then my vintage deck this is the golden tarot by cat black i trimmed mine i trimmed the borders off i love it so much more like this because the borders were this brown pattern and it just made the cards look so brown like this one that has a lot of blue in it just completely dulled it anyway uh this is i want to say late medieval and early renaissance imagery that has been like digitally collaged together to create the tarot deck this is this or another digital collage out of old images is um the only really option the only really option really the only option for a vintage deck in my collection like I don't think I have I say this I have one on my wish list I feel like the antique anatomy tarot would be a good pick for this I don't own it I want to own it but that's a bit of the exception like that like vintagey style like I like to look at it I don't think I want it in a deck but um this is vintage this is a really fun deck. This was, I did the bulk of my learning on this deck actually. And like, just because I think it's funny. <laughs> like, like so, let's try and get rid of some of these shadows. So totally opposite in aesthetics to each other. Like the color palettes are completely different. The like, the, the shapes and the stylization of the art is completely different almost could not be more different oh my god what did I just say about the queen of pentacles queen of discs this is the queen of coins and the empress and then they show up next to each other I love that okay the next prompt is new moon versus full moon which because I don't do consistent readings for the full moon or the new moon and I certainly don't have like a consistent deck that I like to use I'm taking this as like manifesting versus releasing so my new moon deck is going to be the voyager and my full moon the way home a deck for manifesting and setting intentions i don't know the voyager just it feels like ah it feels like that kind of deck um i'm really looking forward actually to getting properly stuck into studying this one soon because i finally have a copy of the 
the big guidebook hold on like it's it's beaten to shit but um yeah way of the great oracle which is a big fat guidebook for this deck and i'm really excited to get stuck into studying it because i think this is such a cool deck um anyhow i am getting a little bit off track but i think maybe also like voyager setting intentions starting new things like that feels appropriate these two might not actually look too bad together. So this is my full moon deck. I uh, like purging and releasing. I just think the way home, the way home is the one for this. I'm I'm also going purely off vibes here, um, but I like it. I think there's something about this spaciousness in the imagery in this deck like it's doing it for me it feels full moony it feels like releasing like it just feels right also like oh my goodness the title so the way home for like letting go of stuff and then the voyager for setting out like like setting out and coming back that's so cool i didn't even i didn't even do that on purpose two of worlds is Worlds the Earth suit? Have these matched up? I think so. Because I think Crystals is the swords. And then Cups and Wands are the same. Anyhow. Do you know what? I don't hate these. Like, for two decks that are very different. These aren't bad. These aren't bad. Anyway. Alright, prompt number, what are we on? Uh, prop number 2.3, <laughs> cute versus creepy. I've got the squid cake again. I know I'm repeating a deck and the deviant moon. So I know I was trying not to repeat decks. Um, but like, as if I have a cuter deck than the squid cake. We've seen this already. But like, the little strawberries. And like, the little chicken. I love that it's just showing me hoops. Come on, the Knight of Coins is riding a frog and it's just so cute. And the pink, and I do think that the pink edges, ooh, the pink edging on this deck is just superb. Actually, you know what, if I was really gonna cheat, <laughs> not that this is cheating to use the same deck more than once, um, or maybe it is cheating, I don't know. This is an oracle. But this, this is so cute in, in that I bought it for one specific card. This one. Come on. Come on. I mean, I liked the rest of the cards, but like this was, this sealed the deal for me. This, this little pig, the self-worth, self-love, self-value, self-respect pig. Too cute. Anyways, my creepy deck. Um, which honestly feels kind of mean, but this is the Deviant Moon. Um, this is a pretty new one to my collection. I've not played around. Oh, I've not really read with this too much. I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like this is like one of the OG creepy decks. And like, I get it. Like it's, some of the imagery is is kind of creepy for sure but um but I like it it took me a while to come around I'm not gonna lie like this how long has this deck been around I think this deck was at least first mass market in 2013 and I don't think I've known about it quite that long but I've been aware of it for some time um yeah it took me a minute to come around to it because it is a bit a bit intense I think it's the eyes as much as anything else the way they stare into your soul is a wee bit creepy but yeah, and like, next to the squid cake, <laughs> this is just, <laughs> oh, it's a different worlds. Okay, the next prompt is on my table versus in my bag. This would be a contender for a cute deck, actually, but it is not the one I chose. Uh, this is very much the sort of Halloween Scorpio season edition. Um, this one is on my table because 
It is my daily draw slash study deck for Scorpio season. So this is literally, well technically it's on a shelf next to my desk, but I have this out every day to pull a card and read the guidebook and jot a couple of notes down in my tarot journal, which I have a video about, which I will link if you want to check it out. Um, but yeah, I'm loving this so much. I'm loving the depth of the guidebook. The artwork is just, it's gorgeous. I love it. Like it's kind of, kind of not cheesy, but it's like, it is so much what it is. Did that make sense? No. Tower of Vampires is on my table. And then in my bag is the Halloween tarot. I got this really recently. It's too cute. It is literally in my bag. This is my go-to carrying around deck for the time being because as I film this, Halloween is next week. I have no idea when this video is going up. I'm gonna be busy, so I'm, I'm pre-filming. But um, the little ghosts. Oh, it's so cute. Um, but yeah, this is literally in my bag. So this changes. I think this is the first time that a travel tin deck has actually been the deck that I'm traveling with. But um, yeah, Halloween in a tin. The flowers growing out of the like beaker brain. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that these are both like theoretically spooky decks, but but very much different vibes and in different directions, you know? Okay, penultimate is realistic versus fanciful. So my realistic deck, this is a new one actually. This arrived the other day. This is the new Terra Arcane, which um, I backed on Kickstarter. Like I said, when I was talking about modern decks, I don't really, I don't really love a deck that's too realistic, so I kind of struggled, and then I realized that this is an animal deck, but it's, I mean, this gorilla is wearing a crown, but it's a bit more of like a realistic animal deck for the most part. It's like real animals in their real habitats. Um, it's also gorgeous, but um, yeah. This is like the closest to a realistic deck I think I have, which is kind of wild. And then my fanciful deck is one that I have definitely spoken about before. This is the Tarot de Carlitides. It's another Fournier deck. Oh, and it's just so whimsical and magical and fanciful. It's, it's so, it's, it's nice. I love this deck. I think it's really gorgeous. I need to pull it out more. I just, I adore this Two of Cups. I think we're gonna end it on that Two of Cups because it is too cute. Um, I think I, this is one of those decks I like to own, but I don't necessarily actually like to read with that often. Like, it's not usually the vibe, but it is really cute and I like pulling it out and looking through it. Okay, last prompt is Quiet versus Loud. My quiet deck is the Hobbit Tarot and my loud deck is Tarot del Fuego. So the reason this is my quiet deck, I'm not really sure the reason this is my quiet deck, but I think it has something to do with the Hobbit being a kind of long time nostalgic favourite. Like we used to have, when I was little, um, we used to have the Hobbit audio tapes like on cassette, which mum would play in the car when we were on like long car journeys um we did a lot of holidays like in the UK driving around to different places so I have a lot of memories of like falling asleep in the back of the car <laughs> to the Hobbit so it feels kind of cozy and quiet for nostalgic reasons and then my loud deck I feel like really needs no explanation this is another Fournier deck this is Tara Lo Fuego and like Look at it, it's yelling, it's shouting. Look at those colors, the like boldness. It's got so many odd and kind of confronting images in it. Like, like look, it's loud. This is one of the loudest temperances I have ever seen. And I, I love it. So yeah, 
quiet versus loud. Not visually so much necessarily. Um, but yes, I love this deck so much. The Tarot del Fuego was an unexpected favourite. I got it because I thought it looked cool. Um, because honestly, Fournier decks are kind of cheap. But this deck is fab. Okay, and that is everything. That is the Tarot to the Extreme Double Bell. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for sticking with me if you've made it this far. Uh, let me know what you think. Give me a like if you liked it. And subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Yes, I was rushing that outro because I think my card is just about full. So that is everything. That is my Tarot to the Extreme double bill. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah, my brain's fully stopped working. So thank you for sticking with me. If you have made it this far, I clearly have barely made it this far. Um, thank you so much for watching. Give me a like if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.